and waiting for Facebook. Okay, I believe we're live on Facebook. All right, folks, I sincerely apologize for the tardiness. We ran into some serious technical difficulties. Um, but I'm going to give it a minute for more people to jump in. How are we all doing? Can you hear me on Facebook? If you can, give me a thumbs up. No one on Instagram just yet. Hello on Facebook. Hello, everybody. Just waiting a couple of minutes. We get everybody in and the, and the live feed. Okay, sweet. Thank you, Vivian. Uh, just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to get together. Um, hopefully you have your items ready to go. Um, I have everything scattered here just because that's the life of an activities director. You're organized but scattered. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes. How's everybody's day going so far? You doing okay? Hi on Instagram. Hi, Facebook. So... Today, oh, by the way, my name is Steven Martinez. I'm a dancer with the Guadalupe Dance Company. I've been with the Guadalupe Dance Company since 2017, but I've known several members of the dance company for years. Um, so it's an absolute joy to have been asked to participate in the day in the life, as well as um, come up with fun activity to do with all of our friends in San Antonio. So thank you so much for having me. Um, so like I said, we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes to make sure we've got you know everybody that wants to join. Um, but I wanna take this time to go ahead and remind you that it is Giving Tuesday. So if um, you haven't already, uh, please visit the Guadalupe Cultural Arts website, guadalupeculturalarts.org and feel free to donate. It is Giving Tuesday, um, so anything and everything helps. So we sincerely appreciate anything and everything you could possibly donate to us, so thank you in advance. Um, secondly, on May 1st, the Academy started their um, virtual classes, so feel free to visit guadalupecculturalarts.org for more information on that as well. I went ahead and I tagged um, one of the flyers in the story on Instagram, so feel free to go ahead and check that out. You can go ahead and visit us at guadalupeculturalarts.org for more information or the Guadalupe YouTube page. All right? So don't worry if you are coming late to the party. Today we are going to go ahead and come up with a fun backdrop that we can use for Cinco de Mayo for anyone who is interested in hosting a FaceTime happy hour with their friends or a Zoom happy hour. You know you want to get on Taco, Taco Bell or Mama Margie's and get that margarita delivered to your house. You just want to have a good time. But why not have a good time with the fun backdrop? And if you're like me, um, you are in your stay in place location and you don't want to go out or you can't go out, what I'm going to help you do is come up with a fun backdrop using what you have at home. So for this um, specific activity, we are going to need a couple of um, pieces of colored paper, scissors, uh, stapler or, or some tape, um, a curtain rod, something to hang it with, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. We're going to go 
um, throughout this activity, feel free to ask any questions um, in the comments below. And uh, let's just go ahead and have a good time, folks, right? So in this instance, um, I, um, at work, they call me the MacGyver of activities. So if you don't know who MacGyver is, MacGyver is someone who can make something out of anything. So for today's activity, I don't have string or ribbon. So I will be using, to hang up our activity, a phone cord. <laughs> and um, for today's activity, we also will need some colored paper. And given the fact that I'm an activities director, I have colored paper. Um, so today we are gonna go ahead and start by taking our colored paper and we're gonna cut it in half, all right? To do so, we're just gonna take a um, sheet of paper and you're gonna have it in landscape, which is long ways. You're gonna fold it in half. Go ahead and fold it down the crease all the way. You're gonna take your scissors, and mine just walked off. <laughs> Give me just one minute. That is so funny, my scissors sincerely just walked off. They were right in front of me, right here. Okay, so you're gonna take your scissors, you're gonna fold your paper in half, and you're gonna cut it right down the center. Hello, Catherine, how are you today? You're gonna take your scissors, cutting it right down the middle, all the way. Now that you've cut your paper in half, you're gonna take the edge on both of these sides, and you're gonna about take about from where your thumb is, this portion here, and you're gonna fold it just like so, okay? So it should be about the width of your thumb there. Not the width, but from the point of your thumb to, I guess, the first little line there. So you're gonna do that on one side, flip it to the other, and do the exact same thing. Okay, our paper should look like this, okay? We've already cut our paper in half, and we folded the ends inside. Alrighty, are we good to go? Our next step is to fold this piece of paper, now that it's folded, in half. So we folded it already two times. This is the third fold. Okay, so that's the third fold. And if you haven't guessed it already, we're gonna fold it one more time, okay? So we fold it in half, then in half, and now we're good to go, okay? So following along, what we did was we cut our paper in half, we folded the sides in, then we folded that in half, then we folded this in half, and this is where we are. Okay, now we're gonna take our scissors and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make papel picado, okay? And what that is, is we've all seen those fiesta flags that hang and blow in the wind and whatnot. We're gonna make our own just for decoration as our backdrop. So on the side that has all the folds, the open side, if you will, you're gonna go ahead and cut three little diamonds Okay, you're gonna cut one right in the center. Let's cut our diamond right in the, in the, right in the center. Okay, and you just wanna get the scissors barely in there. Okay, and then you're gonna adjust your paper, not your scissors, and you're gonna cut the other part of the diamond. Okay, it should look just like that. Okay, just cutting a little triangle into the center of your fold. Alrighty, now from here, you're gonna go from the center of your center diamond to the end, and you're gonna cut another little diamond or a little triangle. When we open it, they will make diamonds. So we're gonna cut another triangle. So we cut, in this, cut into the paper, turn our paper, not our scissors, and we cut the other diamond. We cut the other triangle. Okay, so now we've got our center triangle and our top triangle. And we're gonna do the bottom one now. So we're gonna take it from the center of the bottom. Okay, go ahead and flip it to make things easier on you. 
At the center, you're going to go ahead and cut your first triangle. Again, we're going to turn our paper, not our scissors, and we're going to cut the rest of that triangle out. All right? So there we have three triangles cut into our fold, our opened fold. Okay? Did we see that? Yes. Thank you for everyone who's joined me on Instagram, and thank you to everyone who's with me on Facebook. All right? What we're doing is we're making papel picado to add to our fun backdrop for any kind of Zoom or FaceTime virtual happy hour you're going to do with your friends. My name is Steven Martinez, and I'm a dancer with the Guadalupe Dance Company. So we've already done our three triangle cuts on the open fold. Now we're going to go on the actual fold, and we're going to cut little squares, OK? So in each of the openings, that we've missed from the diamonds, on the opposite end, we're gonna cut a little a little square. So don't do the bottom and don't do the top. So we're just gonna go right in here and right in here. We're gonna cut two little squares, okay? So we're gonna cut our first square. We've got some Gloria Stefan jamming in the background. Okay, there's our first little square that's right in between the two diamonds or the two triangles. We're gonna do the same thing right below it. I know this is nowhere near as, um, Fun or as festive as it was when we had Stephen Moreno making his wreaths, but this is something fun that we could do with the kids. Okay, so now we've cut our two squares. Now we're gonna right in the middle of this square, we're gonna cut a little bitty circle. All right, if you have a hole punch, you could definitely use a hole punch. So we're gonna cut this little circle. All right, we've got a little circle there and our little squares. And it doesn't have to be perfect, folks. That's the fun thing about papel picado. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be fun, right? Okay, so we've done our three triangles on the open part of the fold. On the closed part of the fold, we did our two squares and our little circle. We're gonna add any cut that you want. In this instance, on this fold, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do two little stripes where I cut right into it on one, and then I'm gonna go right up next to it really, really close to make a little stripe. So it should look really tight, almost like fringe. Do we see that? Barely. It should look almost fringe-like. And once we've got in there, you'll fold it to get that little piece out. All you have to do is just pull it, and it comes right out. So you've got your little little strip there, and we're gonna do the same thing up on top. Okay, so I'm doing it right up here. We're going right up next to it to make another little strip. Pull that right there, make sure you pull it out. And there we go, we've got our little, just two little chunks, two little stripes taken out. Now, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is the part that we cut the paper in half, it's got the little hard edge. Here you can go and have some fun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the little border of it. So in this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do almost like a cloud-like curve. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut little ripples into the piece of paper at the very, very edge. Okay, so I'm just cutting, and I'm not adjusting my scissors. It's easier to cut into the paper if you move the paper. Okay, let the paper do the work. Okay, and we're going to get through that end right there. So we should have, you know, it's going to look a little frayed because the paper will go ahead and get messed up as you adjust it through the scissors. 
So we've got that little ripple that's there. Now here comes the scary part, friends. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. Open. That's from the folding halfway. Here's from opening it that one time from the center. And then we have our little fold at the end, okay? So we've got our little papel picado here. Now, since papel picado is normally not as crinkly as folded uh, with straight folds like this, what you can do is just go ahead and take the piece of paper like this and then rub it on the edge of any desk or table. Not too hard because the paper is not delicate now that you've cut so many holes. So you're just going to go ahead and rub it a couple of times on both sides. So do one side and then flip it to the other. This is just to go ahead and iron out a couple of those little creases. Okay. And from there, you've got your papel picado, one and two. So I went ahead and I've already done two extra ones. All right, so I've got one sheet. This is my second sheet. And this is my third sheet. I went ahead and I just did a little couple, a couple of little pre-cuts. So now that we have our papel picado already cut out, what you can do is go on to the next section. All right. So this right here is three sheets of colored paper, three sheets. I have a light blue, a lime green, and a darker light blue. All right. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take another sheet of paper and we're going to cut it in half. I've already taken the liberty of for time and cut this one in half. This is a, a deep purple. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is take this half, we're gonna fold it in half. Some more folding. Decorating on a dime, folks. Take our trusty scissors, we're gonna go ahead and fold this in half, and cut it right down that crease. Once that's done, go ahead and take one of those and again, fold that in half. Now that that is folded, again, cut down that fold or that crease if you will. Now that we've got that piece taken care of, Curling ribbon and paper are pretty much the same thing. The only difference is paper is a little bit thicker. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to curl the piece of paper. So what you'll do is you'll take your scissors on the inside part of the scissor. You'll go ahead and put your thumb slightly, slightly on the blade portion, and you're going to put the paper right in between it. Okay? And what you're going to do is don't pull down on the scissor. It will cut the paper. You're just going to lightly graze it through like you curling ribbon okay you do it a couple of times and you, as you can tell it's starting to curl do the other side that you haven't already curled so you want to curl both sides this is what's actually helping the paper get into its shape so go ahead and curl it a couple of times there we go we've got one curl what you can do now is now that you have your one curl you you go and you can cut it as many times as you want. You can cut it to make it almost fringe-like. But you don't want to go all the way up, okay? You want to go maybe about three-fourths the way, okay? I'm going to go ahead and cut this three different times so it'll look almost fringe-like with four danglies going. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, and I'm almost going to staircase it so it's they're not all the same length. Okay. So there we have our cut almost four different, three different cuts. I don't know if you can barely see it there. All right. Now that that's done, you can go ahead and curl your paper some more. So this way certain lengths will be, I mean, certain curls will be tighter or looser than um, they were in the very beginning. So as I'm curling, you'll see that they'll just get 
a little tighter or a little, they'll just gain some volume, if you will. So we've got some curls there. And we're gonna do that a couple more times, folks. So feel free to get to cutting. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask. It could be everything, anything you could possibly imagine. Um, in regards to myself, like I said, uh, my name is Steven Martinez. I'm a dancer with the Guadalupe Dance Company. I've been with the dance company since 2017. My very first performance with the Guadalupe was in 2017 at Fiesta Pops. Um, I'm known for being the loud one, constantly doing everything possible to make people laugh. I'm a little bit of a clown, but Miss Jeanette doesn't think so. She thinks I'm too serious. She tells me that I need to like let my true colors show. All right. Um, my first partner, dance partner that I ever had with the Guadalupe was Miss Connie. She walked me through dances. Wow, I can't even, almost every dance that I've done, um, my brain, I mean, I've, I take on so many different activities that I absorb so much in my brain. So it's hard for me to remember so many dances. So Miss Connie helps me out. I do have a favorite moment since dancing with the Guadalupe. We were dancing at a fiesta event and I completely forgot a specific number, specific dance, um, to which I look over at Jeanette. She tells me, which is now my favorite quote ever, just be an armadillo. How do you be an armadillo? Well, you just do it. <laughs> but that's my Guadalupe fam, and I miss them terribly. I cannot wait for all of this to go away so that way I can be with my family again and just see them, see their smiling faces. Um, there's only so much that you can say and do on a Zoom call or just when you're talking to your friends and family on FaceTime. Um, and then dancing with the Guadalupe, you really truly become family um, where you share so much about yourself and um, these people just become, you know, an extension of your heart. So when you see them, your heart just can't help but race because they just make you so happy. I'm getting emotional cutting paper. Um, but anywho, so now that we've cut our, our slits, we're gonna go ahead and just continue cutting. And in this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna alternate these curls. So this is where they curl in two different directions. Hola, Susana. Hi, Stephen. How are you? La Marlene. How are you? Um, someone asked me on Instagram where I got Lucy from. Lucy came to me from Marlene and her family. Lucy's original name was Valentina. But I did change her name because she wasn't responding to it. It's her middle name now, Lucio Valentina. Oh, now she responds. She's here on the ground, she's playing. So we've got our curls on both sides. All right. So now that we have that, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take our cord or your rope or whatever you have. In my instance, I have phone cord because I haven't been shopping. Um, and given the fact that I'm an activities director, I just have to make do with what I have, right? So we're gonna take our papel picado and I'm gonna take some tape. That's what this is for here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and move it down so I can have some more foam cord to use to hang. And I'm adding the tape to the bottom, to the top corner there. Already, do we see that? And I'm gonna go ahead and put that bottom corner right up against the cord. Do we see that? Sorry, I can barely tell. Okay, do we see that there? And we're just gonna wrap it around on both ends. Okay, 
We're going to do that all throughout. So it should look just like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster. And you'll wanna go ahead and keep the gap about one sheet, half sheet apart. So go ahead and put that piece of paper there. Let it fold over on both ends. Okay, so there's another one. We're gonna add our third one in. Hopefully I'm not going too fast and everybody's able to follow along. Like I said, this is just a simple, fun activity that you can do with the kids. Adults, please do the cutting. Let the kids tell you what kind of um, design they would like to be put on the piece of paper. And then even before you even hang it up on the piece on the on your string or on your rope, or in my instance on your phone cord, you can get creative. You could paint uh, little fixtures or little doodads on your piece of paper there. You can draw, you know, stick figures. You can put in think of the mile 2020. Hashtag, this is how we quarantine. So we've got our little flags here. Okay, ta-da. All right, because of the width of, of my space back here, I'm only gonna do three flags, okay? So now it's the time to get to the second part. All right, in this part, what you'll need is a curtain rod. And you can have, if you have fabric at home, you can use fabric. Or in this instance, like I said, activities director working from home, gotta use what I got. So in this instance, I'm using a bed sheet. So what I went ahead and did is just because of the sake of the space of the wall, I used my largest curtain rod that I have that it can extend out. And I went ahead and I cut two holes on the ends of the folded part of the seam of my sheet. All right, went ahead and I stuck the curtain rod inside it. All right, so once that is done and that is all in there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take, again, because I don't have ribbon, I'm using, in this instance, a TV cord, an HDMI TV cord. Like I said, everybody at work calls me the MacGyver of activities. From far away, you cannot tell what is holding up these things, but they're being held together by either glue and a prayer or duct tape. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and tie a cute little knot, just one little simple tie around the edge of that curtain rod there. We're going to do it on both sides. But what you want to do is you want to make sure it's taut enough on the top so it's got a little give. We're not going to use the whole cord. And on the other end, we're going to go ahead and tie that other knot. Okay. So all I'm doing with this knot is I'm wrapping around one time and I'm taking the rest of the cord through. And it's going to almost look like a bow tie. And I'm just going to tie that off right there. So it should have a little curl. You're going to let your other ear cord that's left over that's remaining hang in the background so there you have your covered backdrop don't mind that tag there <laughs> okay so with your backdrop that's here you'll go ahead and just take a thumbtack or anything you want 
and just hang it up on the back of the wall there, almost very curtain-like. And once you're done with that, you can hang your papel picado across it. And you've got your little curls here. You just go ahead and tape them onto the back portion of the wall there, scattered out. Another good thing is all those little pieces that you cut out for your papel picado can be confetti. And what I like to do is I like to put all the confetti in a little glass cup, put it in the side. So as you're going throughout your party, if somebody says something that is like the go word, you can either take your shot or you can just throw confetti at the camera. Like I said, friends, this is all in good fun. There's no right or wrong way to decorate these things. And what you can also do is if you have candles in the background, like the way I do, if you have extra papel picado, what you can do is just take that one that you have and just cut it right down the center. So this way, if you've got candles that you already have and that you love and you don't want to take them down, what you can do is just take your papel picado that you just created, take your candle that you have in your background, wrap your papel around it. It already has all the cuts that you've created and the fun little decorative edge there. Once that's done, just take your handy dandy piece of tape, grab one end, take it across the top. And because it's wax, sometimes scotch tape won't hold. So just take your fingernail and scratch right into it. So this way it kind of de develops a bit of a groove and it's got some place to go. Once that's done, you go ahead and take your now covered papel picado candle and put it back on its candle holder. It's a little crooked right now, but that's one thing. Other options that you can have is, like I said, as a dancer of the Guadalupe Dance Company, you do have some fun props. So you can go ahead and take a hat and a handkerchief, go ahead and put that either halved or unfolded completely, and you can go ahead and hang it up on your wall. Take the handkerchief, put it one way, and then hang the hat up right underneath it. Any which way you want, folks, any which way. Like I said, when it comes to decorating your wall for any kind of fun happy hour or Zoom or FaceTime that you would like to do with your friends, there's no right or wrong way. Just do whatever makes you happy and whatever adds color and spice to your life. Thank you so much for joining me on the Guadalupe Cultural Arts um, Facebook and Instagram pages. I really hope you enjoyed your time. Um, I've got to finish up putting this together because I am going to do a live feed for work using the backdrop that um, we just created. And uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you guys go. Remember, it is good. It is good. Tuesday. So make sure you go ahead and visit the cultural arts website. It's guadalupeculturalarts.org and make any donation. Everything and anything that you contribute would be a great help. Secondly, um, the virtual classes have commenced starting on May 1st, so you can get all the information. Um, it's tagged here. Thanks to Anae. Thank you. Thank you so much for posting all of that. Sincerely, folks, thank you so much. Once again, my name is Steven Martinez. Um, I have lived in San Antonio my entire life, and I am a proud member of the Guadalupe Dance Company. Thank you so much for your time. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.